Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. OK, come on, come on. Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers and the winning dish, judged by Gino, will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. A happy cook makes beautiful dinners. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a great British favourite from a long line of butchers that can be traced back over 200 years. The first time I had this dish was when I was seven and it was love at first taste. This is the first time anybody outside the Godfrey family has tasted these sausages. A rustic lasagna from the farmlands of Sicily that goes back three generations of one Italian family. I just remember these wonderful memories of me and my dad in the kitchen and my dad used to sing, he'd sing Pavarotti, Louis Prima, and we'd be singing, drinking, and he'd say, food is the spirit of Italian life. And a fish cake feast dating back over 100 years and traditionally eaten at the start of the Jewish New Year. It started with my grandmother Muriel. Their home was always one of warmth and very open, so lots of members of the community and family members always congregated in their home for massive, huge meals. Tables were always groaning. So this is where I picked up on the warmth and the love that goes into the food and the traditional Jewish cooking. I'm Gino da Campo and today I feel like a king. Why? Because I'm in center London. <laughs> Only the finest ingredients get Her Majesty's seal of approval. And on this show, I too, I'm expecting only the best. So today I found the three home cooks, each with a dish fit for a queen. I've bought my three home cooks in the heart of Marylebone, where in the 16th century, Queen Elizabeth I was hunting just around the corner from here. Now, it's full of fine dining restaurants. In a few hours, my three home cooks will prepare dinner for over 50 paying customers right here in this wonderful restaurant. Now, I must head to the kitchen, find my home cooks and prove once again that there's no taste like home. Let's meet today's cooks. Chris Godfrey is dishing up medieval bangers and mash. Maria Gashevsky is cooking Grandma Giuseppina's lasagna. And Anna Friedman is making Grandma Muriel's fish cake feast. OK, guys, welcome to a professional kitchen. What do you think? Great. Clean. Excellent. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Are you nervous? Yep. No. Why? Could go wrong. <laughs> something could go, right. go wrong. Well, something <laughs> always does go wrong, believe you me. So get on with your preparation. OK, big smiles, because remember, a happy cook makes beautiful dinners. OK, everybody in position. Let's get cooking. Let's All right, come on, let's get doing. Let's meet our first cook. Chris Godfrey is a 47-year-old butcher who lives in Hatfield with wife Siobhan, daughter Sarah, son James and dog Colin. Today, he's cooking an English classic medieval bangers and mash. The Godfrey family have been pork farmers or butchers since medieval times. They originally came from Lincolnshire, but they moved to the London area over 100 years ago. A sausage is only as good as what you put into it. So the better the ingredients you put into it, the better the sausage you're going to get at the end of it. Over the years, the sausage has sort of come full circle. And in the war times, there was no meat around, so uh, they would use a lot of fat and they wouldn't use meat because there was rationing, so there wasn't a lot of meat around. Here I've got belly of pork, which is nice and fat and succulent. The main flavours or the main seasons we're going to be using is nutmeg, black pepper, a bit of ground mace and a little bit of allspice. Now I'm going to get some fresh sage, a bit of fresh parsley, 200 grams of rusk. Right, firstly, mince your meat. You don't want it too fine, uh, you want it kind of a coarse sausage, so just once through the mincer. Place into the mixing bowl and mix, adding seasoning, lightly as you mix it. When you add the rusk, it's going to make it very dry. After you've done that, add the sage and some of the parsley. All the flavours are beginning to work together now. Now we're ready for the filling these out now. This is a small hand sausage machine, which we use for uh, when we're doing very small amounts. We've got the mix into the uh, machine. 
Right, now we're going to press it down a bit just to get some air out of it. That's the skins. Those are hog casings, which are from the pig intestine. The skins are important as, as the sausage itself. Right, James, you want to hold this still and wind it for us? Filling them out, you don't want them too tightly filled as they're going to uh, burst. So what we're going to do is we're going to link them. So you twist one that size, next one the same length, next one the same length, like that. And then you can do this with your eyes closed. It's just a, it's just a case of linking them like that. That's the sausages made. Now we need some mashed potato. We need five of these uh, spuds. Just going to boil that so they're soft. Funny and great, you're probably going to need four of these onions. See, no tears, see? Let's get a bit of red wine reducing there. Because you haven't got onion in the sausage, it's great to have that flavour in, in the sauce. Because that's probably ready for the stock now. The longer you reduce it, the more intense the flavour for the onion gravy. So we can leave that there now. Right, now we're going to do the mashed potatoes, quite simple. Organic butter and double cream. Uh, I like it really, really smooth. It's really funny, when you uh, put sausage in a frying pan and they've been cooking for uh, a couple of minutes, if you shake it, they'll always go over, turn over to the side that hasn't been cooked. We used to call them bangers, literally, because they used to put them in the frying pan and they used to blow up because of the amount of fat that was in them. Look at the lovely colour of those. Those are, those are more or less done. Right, it's all ready now. Now it's time to place up. So that's Chris's delicious medieval bangers and mash served with asparagus and onion and red wine gravy. Gino's keen to find out more. My family have been butchers for uh, five generations, which is at least 200 years. Probably goes further than that, because I think we've just always been butchers. My great-great-grandfather, Alfred, was a Lincolnshire butcher. OK. Frank, my great-grandfather, came from Lincolnshire down to London to uh, seek his fortunes and open up a butcher shop in Stoke Newington. And he used to graze all his cattle in Clissold Park. Years ago, Islington was a village, and there, those parks were places where people used to graze their animals. Frank, he would graze and walk his cattle down Church Street, and then he would slaughter them at the back of his shop. In them days, if you slaughtered pigs, you'd have to use it all up in one day. Frank got four shops going in London in the end before oh, wow. he died. And one of them was over the road here. I used to make sausages over there when I was 18 on a hand filler. See, we're taking you back, yeah, when taking you me were back to where I started. A little off. boy. My grandfather also was a butcher, and he had my father, Peter, who was also a butcher, who had me, who was a butcher. How old were you when you started to get involved in the sausage making, in the recipe? I went to work probably from a very early age, but sausages, probably when I was about from seven years of age, I used to watch my uncle Peter making sausages in Stoke Newington. There'd be all the bowls lined up, all the ingredients, the smells. Ready to go. Ready to go, arms rolled up, mixing up the sausages, ready to uh, fill out into the sausage fillers, into the, uh, the casings. Well, my mum always done mashed potato and onion gravy for us when we were kids. Once a week, it was our, to eat our sausages. OK. So it's my favourite recipe, and it, it's a so great... So sausage and mash. Sausage and mash, but it's not just sausage and mash. It's, it's not it's just a food. sausage, it's, it's your family heritage. sausage. It's my family sausage. So how are you going to carry on and how the, the, this tradition going? Because we don't want to stop with you, right? Well, I've got a son called James who's... OK. He, he wants to come into it. Is yeah. he keen? He's keen, he's keen. He wants to do it? Yep. James, you must do it for the family. So tell me about your dish. How are you going to present it? What I'm going to do is creamy mashed potato and chives and I'm going to make uh, onion gravy with a bit of red wine and fresh beef stock. OK, so just onion, red wine, that's the way you do the stock? That's the way you do the stock, yeah. Well, I'm going to show you, OK, a way to do it, just to spice it up a little okay. bit. First of all, whenever you fry the onion, that is the time for the herbs to go in there, because then you have an explosion of flavour, all the flavour of the herbs comes out, and then you put the red wine. And the herbs I'm using is fresh thyme, which is absolutely beautiful, then I have the sage, because yep. I think it's going to pick up a little bit of the flavour of the sage of your Lincolnshire okay. pork. Uh, rosemary, OK? Smell oh, this. Yeah. Unbelievable. Can you imagine this one in your gravy? It's quite strong, isn't it? It's Rose quite strong, yes. But the it. way you do it, you put it there, you push it down so you release the flavour. And then, of course, when you do the gravy, you sieve, sieve it, it and then bay leaf. OK, yep. bay leaf goes in there. So I'm going to leave this to you. Yep, I'll if that. you want to use them, you will see your simple gravy all of a sudden it's going to have an explosion. Okay. How about that? It's going to, you're going to have a banger gravy. <laughs> That's what you're going to get, a banger gravy. 
Chris will infuse the gravy with his herbs later, but first he gets on with peeling the potatoes for his mash. There's still a lot of work and a lot of potatoes to peel, so we're not home and dry yet, but we're, we're close now. So we're, we've got the uh, sausages to fill out, and then we should be ready for cooking time, which is where the fun starts. A great start to the show, a wonderful recipe with a lot of heritage. But after the break, I have two more cooks to meet with really a fascinating stories. Coming up... A Sicilian lasagna that goes back through two generations of one Italian family and has a special twist. My parents used to send us to Sicily in the summertime and I would spend time with family and we used to sit there on like hot sweaty days outside, you know, crushing the tomatoes in the, <laughs> in the mouli and stuff. A fish cake feast dating back over 100 years and traditionally eaten at the start of Jewish New Year. It just conjures up memories of my grandparents and um, the family that they held it at such an important and such a significance around family gatherings, bringing family together around food. And our three home cooks feel the heat in a professional kitchen. These people are paying for your family dish. Give me something that is, is decent to go up there. Welcome back to That's Not Taste Like Home, where today I'm in a top restaurant in Maribor, and as usual, I have my three home cooks and throw them straight into a professional kitchen. Today they're cooking their family favorites, and now it's time to find out what is the second meal to go on today's menu. Our next cook is Maria Jaszewski, a 37-year-old charity worker and part-time jazz singer from East London, married to Mark. On the menu today is her grandma, Giuseppina's lasagna. This dish originates from Maria's Sicilian grandparents, who first showed Maria how to make it when she was just seven years old. In Italy, all the old ladies would sit outside and have all these huge punnets of tomatoes. They'd just get warmed up in the sunshine. I'm obviously not in Sicily, so I can't do that, so I'm roasting them instead. So that's the tomatoes. They're in the oven now, so now's my time. I need to quickly make the pasta. This is the flour I use. Tipo zero zero. I always use organic eggs and you whisk them up a little bit. This is why old Italian women have got muscles like Popeye. Before I bind it all, I'm gonna add some basil to it. I think that my dad added this. I'm not sure that it was um, in my grandma's recipe. So this is fine to go. I just need to pop it in some cling film and get it in the fridge. In half an hour when we take this out, it's gonna be a perfect bowl. This is a food meal. This is what I'll crush the tomatoes with. And I'm just going to mix it around. I make it as, as authentic as my dad used to make it. I'll pour this in here. My dad used to make his own wine and we used to crush grapes when we were little. I need to get some basil in here. I'll just leave this on to simmer. And now I need to get started on the filling. This is Aberdeen Angus minced beef. My father taught me to put um, like petit pois in there, little tiny peas. It's now time for me to roll out the pasta. Got everything ready now, just need to plate up the lasagna. So really important to get a good amount of sauce in there. Then you pop your pasta in, cover it totally. I'm going to put a chunky layer of the meat. Now I'm going to put the egg in. The eggs are like the staple ingredient that makes it my family's recipe. Um, and I think it's a very Sicilian thing to put boiled eggs in lasagna. We've got the mozzarella, just piece it up all around where the egg is. The last thing to add on here is the parmesan. Right, so that's it. This is one layer of it and I'll repeat it three times until it gets to the top. Put the lasagna in the oven at 180 degrees and cook for 25 minutes. Whilst the lasagna is baking, I make my bechamel sauce. You just pour this over the top, pop this back in the oven, and we'll get nicely browned over the top. Time to plate up. That's Grandma Giuseppina's mouth-watering lasagna. Gino is excited to hear the family history behind the dish. When did the dish start into the family? My father used to say that my grandmother learned it from her mother, who learned it from her mother. So we're talking, you know, at least four or five generations. At least four or five generations. Mm -hmm. My father is Sicilian, okay. and um, he was an only child. Actually, he had a sister, and she died when, when he was really little, so he grew up an only child. 
my grandparents used to teach him everything, so she wanted to prepare him for life and that he should know how to cook and everything, so he got all these wonderful recipes from her. Basically, he passed them all down to me and I just have continued them in my own way. My parents used to send us to Sicily in the summertime and I would spend time with family and we used to sit there on like hot, sweaty days outside, you know, crushing the tomatoes in the, <laughs> in the muli. We didn't have pasta machines and stuff then. We'd be rolling out. by hand. No, no, we used to roll it with the bottles of wine. Oh, yeah, with a bottle and of wine. wine. <laughs> yeah, like, yes. That my grandfather made, and it was amazing. You had these huge sheets of pasta. Does your father come into your mind every time you make yes. this dish? I just remember these wonderful memories of me and my dad in the kitchen, and my dad used to sing. He'd sing Pavarotti. Louis Prima would be singing, drinking and cooking, and he'd say, food is the spirit of Italian life. What would it mean to you, in the memory of your dad, to win? It would just be amazing, be a huge tribute to him, really. I really miss him, I sincerely miss him, and I miss the wonderful times that we spent together. He was just a really gracious, beautiful man. When I'm cooking, and I'm cooking my dad's dishes, I think of him and I sing the songs we used to sing. That's my time I spend with my dad and it's my time to reminisce. And when I sit down and I serve my food, I think this is for you, Papa. I would love to be able to say, your memory lives on, Daddy. Maria begins by chopping her onions and garlic, then sauteing them with the minced beef to make the lasagna's delicious filling. I'm really excited to um, cook for Gino because he's Italian as well. My dish is Italian, it's very traditional. I'm sure he thinks that where he's from in Naples is the best place for lasagna. But I just want to show him that we do it really well in Sicily. With just three hours to go before service, our home cooks are facing the challenge of a lifetime. They must prepare their beloved family dishes in a professional kitchen for the first time. All three are determined that their dish will win the coveted place on this restaurant's menu for a month. Earlier, we met Chris Godfrey, who is making his medieval bangers and mash. And Maria Gashevsky with her grandma Giuseppina's lasagna. So the menu is taking shape. As they say, too many cooks spoil the broth. Well, not in my kitchen. Let's meet our next cook. Our final cook is Anna Friedman, a 31-year-old food dietitian from London, here with husband Scott. Her menu today is Grandma Muriel's fish cakes, accompanied with timos, a carrot, onion and prune stew, and kugel, a casserole of potato, carrots and courgettes. Each dish making up the meal reminds me of my grandma and her cooking. But the fish cakes truly is the kind of star of the show, I would say. And every time I bite into these fish cakes, I just feel her passion for cooking and, and for feeding people and her love. So we're going to kick off with the simmus. Carrot and onion are chopped up really finely. I feel that's really important. That's exactly what my grandma did, really mince the vegetables. And it contributes to the lightness of the fish cakes. I'm just adding a pinch of salt. She added a little bit of sugar, so I'm going to add a bit of this syrup. So this is the minced white fish, sea bream, whiting and haddock. I've now got the minced fish and the carrot together, I'm adding the almond meal. It really helps bring out a little bit of sweetness and lightens the dish up. I'm forming them into the cakes now, coating them in the egg. It helps the matzo meal stick and when you fry it, it gives a really nice texture. My grandma was just renowned for these fish cakes. I remember them with a lot of laughter and smiles and real joyful times. And the meal's ready now, all the dishes are complete and it's ready to plate up. That's Anna's Grandma Muriel's fantastic fish cake feast with a great story to it. Tell me everything I should know about your dish. Well, it's my grandmother's fish cake feast. So it's a really okay. traditional um, Jewish dish. Uh, it's been in my family for several generations. It started with my grandmother Muriel, and then um, my mother Pauline picked it up, and now she's passing it on to me, and um, so that's, there's a real continuity. But before my grandmother Muriel, there would have been my great-grandparents, Carrie and Annie Beacon. 
They were really important members of the Liverpool Jewish community, so they founded the synagogue there. I'm making the fish cakes, which is my grandma Muriel's speciality. She was renowned for them, far and wide. She was just a wonderful cook. She'd rise at five o'clock every morning to cook. Their home was always one of warmth and very open, so lots of members of the community and family members always congregated in their home for massive, huge meals. Tables were always groaning. So this is where I picked up on the warmth and the love that goes into the food and the traditional Jewish cooking. The fish cake dishes were prevalent at every meal. Friday night dinners, Jewish holidays, so the New Year, Rosh Hashanah, okay. Passover. It just conjures up memories of my grandparents and family. What about the memory when you learned the dish with her? How was your grandma? Was she a good teacher? I was in, around her kitchen. The kitchen was the centre of her home. She was always in there. And so me and my brother and the rest of the family would always be in there and picking up on what she was doing. It's all I've ever known is these fish cakes, my grandmother's fish cakes. What would it mean to you? to win today and have this beautiful dish mm. on a restaurant menu. I would be really, really thrilled, and I'm sure my grandmother would be too. It's just a wonderful tribute to her, her generosity and her love of food and family. And it's symbolic of that, and I know my family would be really, really happy too. Anna's got a lot to do today with her fish cakes, baked casseroles, and carrot and prune stew. So Gino has some ideas to help. So Anna, these are your famous fish cakes. Yeah. Look at that, they look absolutely beautiful. Good. Fantastic. Now, what I want to say about when you make fish cakes, yeah. it's very important that they keep the shape, okay? Because often what's happening, you make something like fish cake and then they fry them off straight away. Yeah. And the problem there, because they just been put together, mm. they can fall apart very, very easily. Yeah. Cover them with cling film, right. okay? And let it rest in the refrigerator okay. for at least 20 minutes. So what's going to happen? All the ingredients, they're going to really stack together. Mm. So then when you fry them, yeah. it's going to be absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Fabulous. All right, ciao. Ciao. For hundreds of years, these dishes have only ever been made for our cooks' families. But today, these treasured meals will be served up to 50 paying diners. Chris has ground the meat and is now filling the sausage skins, but he has some reservations about the challenges ahead. The biggest risk for me today is going to be the uh, frying the sausages off. Because they're fresh, they're not going to have a long time to hang up and for them to set. So uh, that, that's going to be the risk for the day, and that's the one I'm worried about. Maria has made her tomato sauce and is now turning her attention to the pasta dough. It's crunch time now, so I've got lots to do. Got to roll out my fresh pasta, and after this it will be just putting the lasagna together and getting it in the oven, so lots to do in a very short amount of time. Anna's prepared the casserole and is about to start on her side dish of carrot and prune stew, but is increasingly worried about time. I got a really great tip from Gino, although it's given me a huge time pressure now um, to put these in the, uh, in the fridge for 20 minutes. It's quite a long time when the, the time, the clock's ticking away already. The menu is complete. Everybody looks happy, but with great lunch comes great responsibility. My amateurs must transform into professional and serve only the finest food. So join me after the break, where are we gonna discover if my three home cooks can really handle the pressure. Coming up. Can I have one lasagna, one more sausage and mash? Gino piles on the pressure. If I can pick up a sausage with my hand, do you know what it means? That all this is all cold. Give me good food on a plate and service runs into trouble. This is seriously slow now. We are over an hour late. People very soon, they're gonna leave. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home, where today I'm in Malibon, in the city of Westminster. I bought my three home cooks to this fabulous restaurant to cook their dishes, but not to their families, but to paying customers. Now the diners are about to come, so let's remind ourselves what's on the menu today. Butcher Chris Godfrey is making medieval bangers and mash, a dish that can be traced back 200 years of his family. 
butcheries in our blood. It's part of who we are, really, and the Lincolnshire sausage recipe that we use comes from that original recipe that we brought down from Lincolnshire with us in 1880. There we got two kilos of Lincolnshire sausages. Maria Gashevsky is making Grandma Jezepina's lasagna, a rustic recipe from her Sicilian farming ancestors. My parents were from Sicily and their grandparents were from Sicily. It's really hot there, so all the old ladies would sit outside and have all these huge punnets of tomatoes. They'd just get warmed up in the sunshine. And Anna Friedman is hoping to impress with Grandma Muriel's fish cake feast, which dates back over 100 years and is traditionally eaten during Jewish celebrations. My grandma was just renowned for these fish cakes and they were legendary. They were part of the Beacon family and featured at pretty much every meal time. Whilst the restaurant staff do their final checks in the dining room, there's last minute preparations for our cooks. Soon, 50 hungry diners will be seated for lunch. Back in the kitchen, Chris starts to feel the stress of lunch service. Yeah, this is like a doomsday stage, because this is where the mashed potatoes are ready, the sausages need to go on, and I'm reducing the sauce down now, so it's a critical stage just to uh, get past this one. I'm just juicing lemons, and this will go, the lemon juice will go into the salad. It's all coming together. It's um, working out really well. I'm just hoping the timing comes together and they're all at the right texture and heat in time for service. It's all a bit of a juggling act. Chris, how are you doing here? Doing you got right. everything under control? Yeah, we're well, just cooking the sausages off now. Just being very careful with them. Because they're so fresh and I've made them, so usually I give them a, about six hours to uh, settle and to set. To kind of settle into the skin. Yeah, I haven't been able to do that, but it doesn't matter. But at least they get all the freshness, all the yeah. flavour. So I can see these are the onions for the gravy. You got the herbs in there, I yeah, can the really herbs, yeah. So it was a yeah. good tip, right? Good tip, yeah. Carry on, my good friend. Five. Carry on, we're nearly there yeah. for lunch. Maria, right. this is ready? Yes. Ah, OK, one sec, one sec. Before you start to cut it, let me give you a tip about baking pasta, OK? okay. And this is for any pasta bake, okay. especially for lasagna. Okay. The problem is now, it's just coming out to the oven, so you can understand the tomato, uh, the meat, uh, you know, everything that is in there is actually quite fragile. So what's happening, if you cut and you put it on a plate, it's gonna go everywhere. Yeah. It's just gonna flop down like that. So the way to do it, to let it rest out to the oven for a good 10 minutes. Okay. And I'll tell you what's gonna happen. All these ingredients, all the starch of the pasta is gonna get together, mm -hmm. so then when you cut it, it's gonna stay beautiful and up on the table. Are you okay with the fish cake? Yeah. See how beautiful they are now? They've been relaxing, fry them off, ready to go. Yeah. What about all your other components? The components are around in the oven and... Okay. Yeah. So you got everything under control? Yes. I don't have to worry? No, 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 oh, no good, worries. Good, good, good. <laughs> Finally, it's lunchtime and customers keen for a taste of home cooking enter the dining room. The diners are a discerning crowd, so our three home cooks will really have to step up to the mark to impress them. Personally, I'm looking forward to the lasagna to see if it's similar to how my mama makes. Grandma Muriel's fish cake feast comes from my area of the world as well, so that should be very interesting. I'm going for the medieval bangers and mash that day. It just looks so lovely, and uh, yeah, we're big sausage fans. With expectations running high, it's now up to Gino to run the pass during service. He must ensure that everything going out of the kitchen is not only cooked properly, but also beautifully presented. It's crucial that he tastes the dishes before they're plated up and sent out of the kitchen. Remember, these people up here, they pay. So we must make sure that the dish looks perfect. Come back to me with your final dish, and then we'll have a taste, OK? Come on, come on. First up, it's Chris's bangers and mash. So I'm really looking forward to trying the Lincolnshire sausage. I've been waiting all day. Look at that. Texture. Chris was a little bit worried that when you make them fresh, they may don't hold together. I think they hold absolutely perfectly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. The meat, the sage, the spices, mashed potato, good texture. This is one bangers and mashes that we love to eat more and more and more. Mm. Next up for Gino's taste test is Maria's lasagna. 
So this is Maria's lasagna. It looks great. It's got a beautiful shine all over the cheese, the fresh basil, which is great. Let me see the texture. Good texture. She definitely relaxed the lasagna. Absolutely spot on. A good dish overall. The only thing that I really don't like is to serve salad and hot pasta on the same plate. So um, I see if I can convince Maria to change her mind. And finally, Anna's fish cakes, accompanied by kugel, a casserole of potato, carrot and courgette, with simos, a carrot and prune stew. First, let me see the fish cake, which is nice and crispy outside. It's a good sign. A good flavor of fish, not overpowering. And I think overall, the moisture in there is incredible. I thought it would be very dry, but it's a really good fish cake. Here in the ramekin, Mm. Wow, I think mean, it's a well-balanced dish, and she's got everything. Fantastic, very good. So whilst the cooks get ready for service, Gino heads front of house to meet some very special diners. So you must be Peter. That's right, Gino. How are you? What a pleasure. Pleased to meet you. What a pleasure. <laughs> How do you feel being here? I've got Chris downstairs. I'm very proud of him, Gino. You know? Yeah, because we, you know, we're a family that's been trading as, as butchers so long. for 105 years. Do you think he's going to do a good job? Oh, yes, yes. It's the finest meal sausage. You can't beat it, can you? Well, I uh, have a good lunch. And a nice coffee. Have a good lunch, and I'll uh, talk to you at the end. Yeah, thank you, Jim. So then you can tell me what you think about the dish. All right, okay. okay? Yeah, okay. Sure, guys. Buon appetito. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi. Are you good? Hello. Hello. Wonderful, Hello. wonderful. Hello. Now we have Anne downstairs. She worked very hard today, For your recipe, she good, worked hard. Good. How do you think Anne, she's going to cope now, in the kitchen? I think she'll be fantastic. She's very calm. Um, she doesn't get hassled. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to taste delicious. I think she ignores <laughs> me when I talk to her. I don't know why. I think she, 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 like, she knows what she's doing. And if it works, she, she tries to kind of stick to that. So. She sticks to it. Yeah. So guys, I have a great lunch. I'm going to have to go downstairs, because otherwise things are going to start to go all pear-shaped. So enjoy the lunch, and I'll see you soon, OK? So the home cook's family have every confidence in them. Let's hope the chefs do, too. By the end of lunch, Gino will award one dish the honor of being on this restaurant's menu for a month. His main judging criteria are cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. Back in the kitchen, service is just minutes away. I'm gonna run the pass from this place here. Okay. So the tickets are gonna arrive, I'm gonna put them up here, and I'm gonna start to shout for the dishes. So when I call up your dish, I want you to reply to me, yes, chef, and tell me the timing. Are we understood each other? Yep. Yes. Sorry? Yes. yes. Yes, chef. Very good, yes, chef. Yes, chef. Come on, everybody in position. And let's get started. Are you ready to order? Grandma Muriel's fish cake, please. Yes, yes. Please. Thanks so much. Okay, so let's on, yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, let's concentrate because we have the first one coming. So first table, one fish cake, one sausage and mash. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Okay, can I have one lasagna, one more sausage and mash? Yes, yes chef. chef. As head chef, Gino demands perfection in every dish, but so far he's not impressed. One second, Chris, come here. I'll put it back, I'll do another one. No, look, look, I mean, if I can leave my finger in the mashed potato, if I can pick up a sausage with my hand, if I can pick up asparagus with my hand, you know what it means? It's, well, it's that cold. That all this is all cold, right? Yeah, yeah. So take this back, stop with the fish cake. Give me good food on a plate. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. One fish cake, one sausage and mash. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Anna? Yeah? I'll pick one of your fish cake. Yeah. I'm going to stack a finger in there, and I'm going to do that. Do you think it's hot, or do you think it's a room temperature? No, it's not hot enough. Right? If okay. I can do that, yeah. that means that it's nowhere near hot enough. Yeah. Uh, prepare me one lasagna. While Chris and Anna are struggling with service, Maria is thriving. The other contestants are a little bit slower than I am, and I think they're having trouble with keeping their food warm. I'm ready, I'm excited, I'm just waiting for people to order my food. Anna, after this, I need four fish cakes. Sure. Okay? Yes, sir. Yeah? Please tell me that you got what I say, otherwise I don't know. Okay. okay. I have to say, today in particular, I'm a little bit worried. 
Um, we are definitely running late for service and Chris, they look a little bit too scared to me. Today's probably the first time ever that I have no idea if everything is gonna run nice and smooth. I really hope so for them, for their family, and for their dishes, so I have to go now. Gino won't allow any of the dishes out to the awaiting diners unless the food is absolutely perfect. But back in the dining room and unaware of the problems in the kitchen, the orders are still flying in thick and fast. Can I have the gefilte fish cakes, please? Can I have one fish cake, one sausage and mash, one lasagna? Yes, yes chef. chef. One fish cake and one sausage and mash. Yes, chef. I need, I need one fish cake. How long? OK, I've got one. Is it hot? Yeah. You sure? You're giving me cold food. I'm just okay. to let you know, because I don't want you to say, Gina, why did you let it go yeah. when it's not hot? Yeah. This okay. is not hot. Yeah. Are you happy? No. <laughs> so then you need to do me another one. Okay. Gino is still unhappy with the dishes and won't allow any of the food out of the kitchen. I'm a bit worried now because we're running the lunch really late. I think we are definitely over an hour late. Uh, diners have been waiting for about an hour and a half now, and uh, we haven't started yet. Now, it's time to rock and roll. Come on, guys, this is seriously slow now. We are over an hour late for lunch. People, very soon, they're gonna leave. Okay, give me your lasagna, I'll see. Very nice. Good. Get your bangers out. Yes, yeah, chef, get your bangers out. Finally, the cook's dishes meet Gino's high standards and he allows the dishes to go out to the patient diners. After such a long wait for their food, what do the diners think of today's dishes? That is lovely sausage, it's really, really nice. It's got lots of herbs, kind of sage and cinnamon in it, actually, I think. There's cinnamon in there. No, it's really yummy. It's delicious. I make quite a mean lasagna, and this is very nice, though. The fish cake is um, it's quite dense. There's a sweetness to the carrot vegetable medley, which is quite pleasant. Um, yeah, good contrast of flavours. I need one more fish cake, one more sausage, one lasagna. Yes, chef. One more sausage, come on. I need a fish cake to go with the sausage, so you need to uh, be quick. All looking the same, all beautiful. Just like you, chef. Mm, thank you. Yeah, no, this is nerve-wracking when it comes down to actually uh, Plating up for somebody to eat is a bit different to uh, uh, cooking at home. Is this hot? When your friends are eating your food, they're always going to say it's lovely. And so actually, this is the best test to get more people who have no attachment to you to be able to actually say it was delicious. How long for the fish cake? Um, three minutes. Three? Two, two. two. My fish cakes aren't hot enough. They have been really hot, but they've been waiting. Um, I've been trying to control the temperature. I'm trying to keep everything hot, which is quite challenging um, without One it. fish cake. Here we go. Yes, chef. OK, two sausage, one lasagna. Give, give me this four. I need four of them, yeah? Yeah, I know. These people are not getting a free meal. These people are paying for your family dish, OK? Come on, give me something that is decent to go up there. Come on, the table has been waiting for over half an hour for these sausages. Very hot in the kitchen, but service is definitely not over yet. Now, after the break, join me because I have to make a decision on which dish is going to be on this restaurant menu for one month. The so two sausages, Chris, two sausages. Yep, chef. Coming up. As the pressure increases in the kitchen... Four fish cakes, two sausage and mash, one lasagna. Will the chefs complete today's lunch service? This goes to the same table. You give me two different uh, candle plates. I'm on the case, don't worry. I need one more fish cake. Yes, chef. And I need one more sausage. Yes, chef, one minute. One lasagna. Yes, sir. OK. Chef Gino De Campo is on a mission to prove there's no taste like home. How long for the sausage? Uh, three seconds now. One, two, three. They're not here. Now, give me the fish cake now. That's your 20 seconds away. Come on. Come on, come on. He's found three home cooks with three historic family recipes. Together, they've taken over a restaurant in London. 
The restaurant's full and as a result, the kitchen's been inundated with orders. Home cooks Chris and Anna have struggled. Whereas Maria has risen to the challenge. Okay, gonna have a one fish cake, one sausage and mash. One bang as a mash, chef. Two sausage and mash, one lasagna. One lasagna, chef. Even though the end of service is in sight, Gino sustains the pressure on the chefs to ensure that quality doesn't slip. Anna, make sure they're not burned underneath. They're not. Don't lie to me because I'm gonna check them. Okay, I'm not lying. This goes to the same table. You give me two different uh, candle plates. Yes, sir. Probably not. Are you happy with that? I'm on the case, don't worry. You right with that? No, it's too burnt. So why are you putting it on a plate then? How long for this uh, sausage? They're here now. Messy artist. That's who you are. Okay, guys, this is the last table, so the last push. Two more sausages, one lasagna. Great, right. yes, yes chef. chef. Chris, can you tell me when you're at 30 seconds, please? I'm at 30 seconds now. No, it's not. You drive me mad with your timing. It's been done, got a watch. <laughs> one bang as a mash for some trouble. One bang as a mash, yeah. One lasagna, chef. And your lasagna looks amazing, by the way. Thank you. Okay, guys, everybody here? That was the last table. Was it? Really? Yes! Oh, okay. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Well, well done. done. Well done. Well done. Put a little bit of sweat there. You worked really, really hard. Before we leave, everything that you uh, see around here needs to be clean. All right. Come on. Thank you. Thank you clean up. No, you're welcome. The last dishes are being served in the dining room, and very soon lunch will be over. It's now up to the diners, the head chef and the restaurant manager to help Gino decide which dish will win a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. Better late than never, yeah. Very nice, but better late than never. I ordered the lasagna, delicious. A lot of lasagnas um, have a lot of sauce. This one was very firm. It had the different layers, the meat, all the herbs, the flavours were delicious. The sausages were absolutely superb and the sauce was... Again, absolutely excellent, if a little thin. I ordered the fish cake, and the fish cake was really, really nice. <laughs> well, they seem to have enjoyed them, but which dish will Gino pick? Will it be butcher Chris Godfrey with his great English favourite, medieval bangers and mash, a recipe passed down his family for centuries? The first time I had this dish was when I was seven, and it was love at first taste. This is the first time anybody outside the Godfrey family has tasted these sausages. Or will Maria Gashevsky make the grade with Grandma Giuseppina's lasagna, a rustic dish from the farmlands of Italy that goes back two generations of her Sicilian family? When I sit down and I serve my food, I think this is for you, Papa. I would love to be able to say, your memory lives on, Daddy. Or can Anna Friedman win with her Grandma Muriel's fish cake feast that dates back 100 years and is traditionally eaten at the start of the Jewish New Year? It would be really wonderful. I would be really, really thrilled. And I'm sure my grandmother would be too. It's just a wonderful tribute to her. Time to welcome the cooks into the restaurant to find out whose heritage dish will win a place on the menu. All for you. All for you. So, guys, how do you feel? Tired. Great. Tired? Yeah. Great. Yeah, is this something that you would do it again? Uh, no. In no. a heartbeat. Straightforward, no. I'm ready. Tell me when. Ready to do it again. Yeah. Uh, Maria, your dish, amazing. You know, an Italian lasagna the way it should be. June service, spot on. I have no, you know, you, you did really well, very concentrated, I like that. Chris, what can I say? A sausage master. I, I, at the beginning, when you said to me, Gene, I'm going to make sausage from scratch, I thought to myself, this is never going to happen. But I don't know how did you manage, but everything came around absolutely beautifully. You were a little bit under stress during service. Your timing is completely wrong. <laughs> Every time I asked you how long, you were coming with three seconds, and it took four and a half minutes. But, you know, apart from that, it was a beautiful dish. Anna, I told myself at some point you're gonna punch me in the kitchen. <laughs> Never. Every time I was talking to you, you were completely blank to say, I don't really care what you have to say, I'll do it my way. Uh, and your way, your way, it was a great way. I mean, it was a few hiccups, but you know, overall, beautiful dish as well. You know, I loved your fish cake, very good flavors. Okay, as far as concerning me, three winners, by the way. Thank okay, you. on this show is only winners because we're celebrating your family dishes and the winner of today's There Is No Taste Like Home is... Chris Banger and Mash.
Thank you, guys. Really, really good. Really, really good. This is yours. I feel really over the moon, really, uh, shocked, because I thought everyone done really well. Uh, just really, really, really happy. I feel great. It was such an, an amazing experience. Um, the whole thing was so exhilarating. Gina was amazing. It was just everything I thought it would be and more. No, I feel really thrilled, actually. Um, the first thing my mum said to me, she said she was in tears when she started tasting the fish cakes because they really reminded her of my grandma. So I think it was a good result and I'm really pleased to have been involved. What an amazing show. And of course, congratulations to Chris and his banger and mash. Now join me next time as I continue my journey across the UK to prove one more time that there is no taste like home. So if you want to try the winning dish yourself or perhaps you want the details of the recipes featured on today's show, go to itv.com forward slash food.